Hey guys, so now we're going to go over the first type of indeterminate forms, right? So, as I said before, L'Hopital's rule is about dealing with limits using derivatives, right? So, in this type of indeterminate form, we're going to deal with whenever we get 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, right? So, let's go ahead and check it out. So, here we have this technique will be used when we have limits that end up in indeterminate forms, right? So, we care about indeterminate forms, very long word for me to spell. So the type of indeterminate forms, since there's many, the ones that we're going to be dealing with in this video are going to be whenever we have 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, right? So before whenever we got 0 over 0, we had to whether do like some conjugates, some factoring, all that cool stuff, right? Which wasn't really that cool. But now we're going to go ahead and use derivatives, right? So we're going to manipulate by just taking derivatives. And I wouldn't say that L'Hopital's rule, which is what we call this type of solution, is very hard. It is just very careful when it comes to what type of indeterminate form you're in and making sure you get out of it, right? So there's a lot of different types of indeterminate forms, and that is the only part that I want to make sure I go over, that you guys are prepared for every type of problem, right? So let's go ahead and Look at this example one. It's going to be real quick, which is a bunch of examples. And here we have that x squared minus 1 over x minus 1, right? So with limits, I know books like to go ahead and like approach it from the left and approach it from the right. But we're going to go ahead and just plug it in because it maybe just works, right? But when I plug it in, I get 1 squared minus 1 minus 1, which is going to give me 0 over 0, which is my first type of indeterminate form, right? Now, I need to do something. Before I would look at this, it would be a polynomial, and I would probably factor the top and factor the bottom, right? But guess what? I'm not going to do that right now. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite my limit as limit as x approaches 1. But I'm going to go ahead and take the derivative of the top by itself, no quotient rule, which is what you would think of when I say take a derivative. I would just take the derivative of the top, which is 2x, and then I would take the derivative of the bottom. And that is exactly how I'm going to be taking care of of this limit, right? And that's, that's the L'Hopital's rule, which I didn't even talk about in the beginning. I just went straight into the problem because it's just that simple. All we got to do is just take a derivative of the top and take a derivative of the bottom, and we're done. No complications, no long proofs, we're done, right? So now, let's see if I got rid of my indeterminate form, which means that if I plug in my limit now, am I good to go? If I plug in 1 into the top, I get 2. If I plug in 1 into the bottom, I can't. So my answer is just 2. And I'm done. I just got two. I didn't get zero for zero or infinity to infinity. So I am done. Now I'm ready to move on to example two. That was fairly quick, right? So here, once again, we're just going to input stuff. I don't want to go ahead and have to do from the left and from the right. That just takes too long. And we're just going to go ahead and input, right? So I'm going to have zero minus sine of zero over zero squared. Well, zero is just zero. And then sine of zero actually gives you zero. So this is something that you guys should know. And if you don't, now you know. So 0 minus 0 is going to give me 0 on top, and the bottom 0 squared is just 0. So then again, I run into the same type of indeterminate form. But this example has a little twist. Let's check it out. I'm going to go ahead and do my L'Hopital's rule, which means that I'm going to derive the top by itself. So I get 1 minus cosine of x. And the bottom, I just get 2x, right? So now I go ahead and plug in 0 again. So I get 1 minus cosine of 0 over 2 times 0. So the bottom is going to be 0 for sure. But the top is going to be 1 minus cosine of 0, which is equal to, that is equal to 1, right? So if I have 1 minus 1, the top is going to give me 0, right? So I get 0 over 0 again. That's no good. So what do I do? Do I just give up? Well, guess what? We don't because we can just take another derivative right away and let's see if that works. So let's go ahead and take another derivative. So I get the derivative of 1 is just going to be 0. And the derivative of negative cosine, right? The derivative of negative cosine. Cosine is a part of the three C's rule. So the derivative of cosine is negative, but I have a negative in front. So that negative and the negative, the negative from in front of it times the negative that I'm going to get from the derivative are going to cancel. So therefore, I'm going to get a positive sign when I take the derivative of a negative cosine over 2. And now I go ahead and input 0 again. So I go ahead and get sine of 0 over 2. And sine of 0 over 2 just gives me 0 over 2, right? But what is 0 over 2, right? If you guys remember, we go ahead and discuss that by saying 0 over a number 
is on or a number over zero is no, so it gives you undefined, right? So in this case, we have zero over a number, zero over two, therefore we're on, so it gives us zero, so we're good to go. If it were to be two over zero or a number over zero, it'd be undefined, so we'll be not good and we'll be just, won't be, we'll be happy. So let's go ahead and check out example three. So from example two, all I want you guys to know that it was different from example one due to the fact that you can take more, you can apply L'Hopital more, rule more than once, right? Eventually you can do it three, four times. Professors love to see that because some guys would just give up right away. Just being like, ah, oh, whatever. I did it. Just doesn't exist. I give up, right? So let's go ahead and check out example three and where, which we're approaching infinity, right? So I'm going to go ahead and just plug it in, right? So if I do that, e to the infinity is going to be a really big number. And then infinity cubed is going to be another really big number. So we're just going to call this infinity over infinity. Just some really, really big number. But the question is, L'Hopital's rule is going to let you take derivatives to see which guy is bigger. Is the e to the x bigger or is the x cubed bigger, right? And by bigger, I mean which function increases fastest. So let's go ahead and take a derivative because I got my indeterminate form of infinity over infinity, which looks like this guy, the second one that I wanted to tackle in this video. So now that I do that, I'm going to take the derivative of the top, which is just e to the x, and the derivative of the bottom is 3x squared. Okay, cool. But if I plug in infinity again, I'm going to get infinity again on the top because e to the infinity is a really big number. And then infinity squared is also going to be a really big number, which we're just going to call infinity. So I'm, I'm in indeterminate form again, so I need to take another derivative, right? But we're going to do that in example two. So this is not the first time where we take a double L'Hopital's rule. So let's go ahead and do that. So the top is always going to stay. It's going to be e to the x, right? But check this out. The pond room in the bottom is getting smaller. So as we're, as we're taking more L'Hopital's, the bottom is clearly smaller. But we just can't jump to conclusions. Let's wait till the pond room gives up. The exponential is stronger. So here the bottom is going to give us 6x. And then I'm going to input e to the infinity over 6 times infinity. So we know that the polynomial is getting weaker, but it hasn't given up yet because we still have e to the infinity over infinity. So we're going to say that e to the infinity is bigger, but we can't say yet. Right? So we're still going to get infinity over infinity because we have two really big numbers still. But we're actually going to take the L'Hopital rule again. We're going to do it for a third time. And that is going to give us limit as x approaches infinity of e to the x again because that doesn't change. But now the polynomial finally gave out because the derivative is now 6. So... The polynomial is out. It is just a constant now, right? So now we can clearly say with all the confidence in our math skills that e to the infinity is going to give us infinity while 6 is actually going to give us just 6. So infinity divided by 6 is still going to be a really big number. So our final answer for this is infinity, right? So whenever we have a polynomial and an exponential, Wherever the exponential is at, whether the denominator or the numerator, that's where it's going to grow the fastest, right? The polynomial is the most powerful, and it's always going to take over the, the exponential is always going to take over the polynomial. So, and that's because since the polynomial was in the bottom and the exponential was in the top, the top was growing faster, so this actual limit was going to infinity. All right? So, let's go ahead and check out different, another type of indeterminate forms. See you guys next time.